All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Saad, and uh, I'll be hosting this webinar today with Reed and Larissa. Reed Hi. is um, head of our banking and also our support function. And Larissa is um, a customer success lead with us and also a mortgage expert. And uh, I also um, lead BD and customer success. Today, we're very excited to talk to you about baseline banking. And just to give you a flavor, we're going to be talking about eight baseline banking uh, highlights. And we'll actually show you that in the product. We'll um, leave 15 minutes for Q&A at the end. So the purpose of Sort of the, the heart of this is 30 minutes to go through number one and two, and we'll do the Q&A in the end uh, for 15 minutes. If you'd like to ask any questions, you can send us your questions through the Q&A part. If you look at the bottom of your Zoom, it, it says Q&A chat uh, icon. You can submit questions there. Just so you know, this is being recorded and it is being live streamed, I believe, on YouTube and Facebook. So you, you'll be able to watch a recording of this that we'll send to you after this. Awesome. And uh, let's jump in. So just a quick plug. We're doing a four series webinar uh, campaign for this uh, month and next month. Next uh, is February 7th, rent collection and tax reporting. So check that out and we'll send the rest to you as a reminder over email. Great. So let me jump in by talking a little bit about the basics and then we'll jump into the specifics and details of the product. One of the things we always share is that our baseline banking account is custom built for landlords and real estate investors. And really you can uh, set it up for any type of uh, situation that you're an LLC, whether you're an individual which, or sole proprietor, a corporation or a partnership. Next, uh, what gets me really excited is the very attractive rewards that we uh, provide through our banking product. Again, you may have seen this already, but a really high competitive 3.3% APY on all deposits whether that's rent you've collected or security deposits in the account or just balances that are sitting there. Unlimited 1% cash back and up to 5% cash back on special categories like going to Home Depot or Lowe's. In addition to that, some of the core functionality that I'm very, very excited about that's also newer and you'll be able to see some of that is mobile check deposit, the ability to pay third parties or yourself through ACH for free, free domestic wire, we're uh, compatible with PayPal and Venmo. And uh, just a quick preview of things that are coming, physical checks, automated transfers, and same-day ACH. Yeah. And, awesome. and so, Reed, um, so Reed, I'd love for you to talk a little bit about some of the newer uh, product features like virtual accounts and cards and uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, what's so exciting. Yeah, and I will say, I know, Saad, you teased a little bit the coming soon features, but we we definitely get a bunch of, of requests from from all of you on a regular basis. We take those very seriously, and uh, you know, we're really excited to to have you know be releasing some more of those features over the next uh, you know few months. Um, but virtual accounts is a core um, feature of basing banking, and so when you open a basing banking account, um, you have one account, but then you can open as many virtual accounts as you would like. So really to offer you the flexibility um, to organize your finances the, the way that you might want. And so what we visualized here is, you know, for example, one LLC that, that owns a duplex and, you know, this specific customer would have, you know, one account uh, for each unit, uh, one account for security deposits and one account, which is sort of a reserve um, for, for rehab. Um, all these accounts have their own account number. Um, virtual cards is also, you know, something that we, we recently um, offered in addition to the physical debit card um, that we send you. Um, and so, you know, in addition to, you know, just offering, you know, a, an extra card, they are obviously instantly usable. So when you get approved for a basin banking account, it does take, you know, several days for your physical debit card to arrive. So you can activate um, a virtual card uh, instantly. Um, you can also, uh, similar to the um, physical card, you can, you can set, um, you can lock it and you can also set spending limits on a daily basis or on a monthly basis. Um, and then, you know, I think the thing that we're most excited about is really that you can use virtual cards to automate your bookkeeping. Um, and if you look a little bit, you know, on the sort of visual mock-up that we have below, and we're going to do a demo later to, to bring this more to life. Um, but you see this, you know, one account would have, you know, it's, it's physical card that, that is issued automatically. Um, and then, you know, this individual would have made, you know, additional virtual cards. So virtual card, again, it's, it has its own card number, um, et cetera. It's just not printed for you. 
um, but you can access it via all the information um, by the product, you can add it to your wallet. Um, and this individual would have made one for insurance, you know, one for utilities um, and, and one for a contractor, right? So really to organize their spend. Great. Um, and then I think, you know, something that gets us really, you know, most excited about, you know, why we're building Baselane is to really offer a, a banking product that is supercharged for real estate investors and landlords with many other core um, uh, features related to managing your rental property finances. So I've already touched a little bit on the ways that Baselane banking can help you automate your bookkeeping, right? So with virtual cards, for example, that, you know, every time they're spent on it, those transactions automatically get tagged to a specific category. We also have native cash flow analytics that you can build at the unit level and category level uh, income statements. Obviously, rent collection is a core um, product that, that we offer, and many of our basing banking customers um, actually collect rent as well, and that rent goes right into a basing banking account. And then we're building you know, always a, a marketplace of other financial products, right? So you can get property insurance uh, and lending quotes uh, for free very quickly um, online and, and, and quite competitive rates as well. Um, basing is, is free. So, you know, basing banking, there's no minimum balances, no monthly fees. There's no any, you know, any sort of hidden fees for you, uh, you know, ACH fees or wire fees. So this is really a, a core tenant for, uh, you know, the banking product that, that we offer you, um, as, as part of, of being a basing banking, uh, customer. Um, and then, you know, some of the questions that, that we often get is, you know, is basically in safe, is it secure? Um, all our accounts are FDIC insured up to $250,000. Our banking partner is um, Blue Ridge Bank based out of um, Virginia. They have over two and a half billion dollars of deposits. So they are you know, a very legitimate uh, bank. Um, you can add any of your cards to Google Pay, Apple Pay, and you can you know, sort of tap. And so it's, and it's quite a convenient way of paying. And then the card itself um, is a Visa card. Um, it is under the uh, Visa zero liability policy. So if you have any unauthorized transactions, uh, you know, you're welcome to call the number and, and you'd get instantly provisioned the credit um, for that refund. Um, Thanks, Reed. And I think one thing to highlight on that also, if you're inter interested in more about our security, we actually have a page, uh, basically.com slash security with a lot of information. I'm just going to post that here in case anybody's interested and wants to read through that. Uh, happy to take any questions that you have about that. So really, uh, the, now we're going to jump into the live demo, and our intention here is to show you how to set up an account, how to fund an account, how to use that account for payments, how to set up the virtual accounts and cards, and how to interact with all the integrations that we mentioned on the bookkeeping and rent collection side. And uh, we're hoping to be able to give you flavors of what we've seen work really well from our existing customers that are really enjoying the platform. So uh, I'm going to hand it over to Larissa to show you how to set up a new baseline banking account. Great, thank you. So I'll be sharing my screen and going over to our Baselane demo account. So just give me one moment here. Give me, here we are. So the first thing that and I would do- So do we wanna take the questions? I saw one question's come in. Uh, we'll just take them after the demo, I think, right? Yeah, we're gonna go through the demo and uh... We'll, we'll, we'll uh, collate the questions. Thanks for submitting. And we'll cover those um, in the Q&A section. Great. So to open a Baselane bank account, it's super simple and quick. You'll go over to the banking and card section. You'll click add an account and open a Baselane account as we discussed, either as a sole proprietor or as your business, you can open it in an LLC. You'll enter some personal information. Once you've entered and submitted the application, you should be approved within 24 hours. Once you're approved, you'll be able to fund your baseline bank account. You'll go over to the account that is now open. In this case, it's Apex Investors LLC. You'll click on the triangle here, and now you'll have your main account. Obviously, we want to fund our baseline bank account because there's some great rewards like that 3.3% APY on any existing balance. And the easiest way to fund would be going to the add fund section, initiate a bank transfer, and connect to an external account. We do work with a third-party provider called Plaid. So they have a relationship with a lot of different banking institutions displayed here. You can easily enter your credentials, connect to your banking institution. And the great part about it is it can 
import about 24 months of transactions, which is really great for our integrated bookkeeping. And we'll talk about that in a few moments. If your bank doesn't connect through Plaid, that's okay because we have some other alternatives for funding your baseline bank account, like mobile check deposit. I personally don't like going to the bank. I don't have time, but having a mobile check deposit option in my baseline account is pretty nice. So you could technically fund your baseline account through a check from your external account. That's a great way. You can also deposit checks. You'll just go on to baseline.com on your mobile phone, follow instructions, and it's a seamless process. You can also connect through PayPal Venmo. Our virtual accounts as well as main accounts are applicable for both of, for PayPal and Venmo in case you would like to receive or send funds that way. Another really cool feature is the domestic wire. It's great to send funds instantly, same day or within one business day if we miss the cutoff time. The best part about this domestic wire transfer is that there are no fees and we've waived those fees inbound and outbound for a limited time, which is pretty great. So now that you've, yeah. Larissa, maybe just uh, take a pause here and just yeah. uh, check if any folks have any questions on um, setting up an account or adding funds to the account. One other uh, popular avenue of funding the account is you can have, you know, log into your existing banking institution and obtain the account number, routing number of this account you just opened. So for example, if we go to one of these accounts, like the main account, you can obtain the account number and routing number from here. Right. And you can do a push transaction from the existing bank account that you have to transfer funds in. And it takes about two to three business days to, to uh, transfer over. So that's another exactly. option. But I wanted to see if folks have any uh, questions or comments about setting up a new account application uh, and funding before we move on. Okay, I don't see any immediate questions, so I think we'll keep moving. Uh, but uh, Srikanth, you did ask the question, so let's just quickly talk a little bit about this. On the banking side, uh, as a banking institution, um, typically like a typical bank, we do earn uh, money on deposits as well as the use of debit cards, right? So traditional banking uh, revenue structure there. In addition to that, our marketplace also drives revenue uh, through partnerships that we have. And uh, those are like the main avenues of how we make money today. In the future, we may introduce more of a pro tier that has more uh, sort of a SaaS monthly subscription, but we don't have any plans uh, or immediate plans for that yet. Yeah, and I think all the features that are most of the, you know, all the features that are available today, the core features are continuing to, you know, be free, right? So when, exactly. when we mention yeah. a premium, a premium tier, we don't have any plans to, you know, put all the, all what's available today behind, you know, a paid, a paid version of the, the product. Awesome. And I'm glad everybody submitting questions here. So we do have a couple awesome. of questions, Larissa, I'll read them out and I'd love for you to take them on. So, yeah. uh, or, or read, uh, what is required to set up an account? i.e. personal and business info? Sure. Why don't we just like quickly go through that? So you'll go over to the banking and card section here. Click on, oh no, I got kicked out. I apologize. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> small technical difficulty here. Uh, so we'll go right back to the banking and card section. I apologize. And you'll go to add account. And as I mentioned earlier, you can open that baseline bank account either as a sole proprietor or an individual. Um, I'm sorry, as a sole proprietor or in your LLC. So you can go over to opening this. Let's say you just want to add your information as an individual, open it this way. You can just put your first name, your last name, your date of birth. Once you do, you'll have to, you know, we can just do it together. Yeah. I mean, I think address, uh, address, business information, your security and, social security. and yeah. social security number. So it's pretty simple. If you're opening it as a business, you'll have to, you know, provide your EIN, things like that. But um, it's a pretty simple process. And I, like I said, it can take up to 24 hours. If for any reason we need to ask for additional documentation, we'll reach out to you and, you know, we'll work with you to make sure that the application approval is pretty seamless and simple. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, next question. If we want to utilize a debit card, uh, a basin account needs to uh, op be open, correct? That's correct. From so yes, you do need to open a baseline banking account to uh, have a debit card or any of the virtual um, accounts or virtual cards. Okay. When opening the account, I haven't done an LLC, but it may want, I may want one in the future. Would I open just an individual account? Yes. That's a good question. Yes. 
Uh, and and if you do open one, an LLC in the future, you can always open another baseline bank account. So you don't have to just have one. You can have one for your name, for yourself, or an, in your LLC, as many LLCs as you'd like. That's a great point. Often, yeah. often we see landlords actually, they have multiple entities and they will open individual baseline banking accounts for, at the LLC level. So you could do mm -hmm. it that way. Uh, if you also, let's say you have three LLCs and you have, you still want a personal account as well. Maybe you have partners, et cetera. You can do that. You can open three different LLC accounts and open one as a sole proprietor, which is when we say personal, that's what we mean. It would be a sole proprietor account. Cool. And then let's see, uh, we've got a few more questions, um, but let me continue here and we'll get to these in the next session uh, once awesome. we go to the next part of the demo. Cool. So I was going to hop in and kind of talk about the virtual accounts. So like we talked about having a baseline bank account, you'll have one physical main account where your debit card will be sent to the address stated. You can always click on the three dots here, see the account details as well as our banking partner, Blue Ridge. But the best part about this is that you can open these virtual accounts. You can have as many virtual accounts as you'd like, and you can just put the virtual, you know, the nickname here. You can also auto tag for like a property if you would like. You just hit the agree button. And then once you create the account, like in this example, I've opened one for my security deposits. I've also opened one for a maintenance reserve. These are true accounts, so they will have their own account number separate from the main account. You can receive funds, you can remove funds from these accounts, and you can still earn that 3.3% APY. Really great feature. And even though they don't have physical cards, we have created virtual cards, which I'm going to go over to this section here where you'll be able to see the cards and have Reed kind of talk more about those. Thank you. Yeah. And yeah, I just just a quick plug on the on the virtual accounts. There's many ways to set those up in terms of configuration. The what we just showed you here is a quite popular uh, setup that we see landlords doing. Another way to do that is you can also kind of like the main account you have there. You can have many of those types of accounts for the unit. So let's say in a property you have four units and you want to separate things. You can do unit one, two, three, four. Uh, let's say within an LLC, you have um, five properties. You could create a virtual account for each property inside of that main account. So there are many um, ways you can set it up. If you'd like to learn more or want a kind of consultation on how best to set that up, we offer onboarding calls for all of our customers at Larissa Lead. So we'll be happy to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. Great. Thank you. And I read that, sorry, that, yeah, going back to the virtual car. So this is a big, very exciting moment. And for me, it's very exciting as a landlord too, because I've been wanting to automate some of the spend that I have, and I'm very excited to actually start using this. So Reed, uh, without further ado, can you talk to us a little bit about this? Yeah, of course. So we launched um, Virtual Cars in December. Um, I was very surprised. I won't share any specific metrics, but we're, we're seeing you know a, a pretty substantial portion of our of our customers already start to use these, um, which is I think speaks to the you know potential value of them. Um, I, I referred to them a, a little bit earlier, right? So when you get a basic banking account, you automatically receive one physical card. In this case, it would be that sort of Apex Investors LLC main account um, that, that's illustrated. Um, all this is fake uh, information. So we're showing you a card number, but but uh, that that's obviously fake. Um, and then, you know, the, the real idea behind virtual cards is that you could create them uh, at the merchant level or at the category level um, to be able to manage your spend, right? And so in this case, you know, there was a, been a... Um, you know, virtual card made for, if you don't mind just going back, um, yes. and I can show has been built, you know, one for Con Edison, you know, another one that's a supplies for a home project and just a general supplies card, right? So if you click on like the, the utilities for Con Edison one, for example, um, you can actually see, you know, property auto tagging. So we have McCoy loop there. You can, you can set a specific virtual card to, you know, any individual unit or multiple units or properties. And they can also choose the category that it is related to. Um, and so what this really does in the back end is every time that that card is used, um, it automatically tags it in our transaction ledger to that property and to that category. Um, and so, you know, obviously not all expenses um, that you have can be paid uh, via a card, um, but those that can, you know, one, it's a great way to automate the bookkeeping on the back end. And two, you will earn that cash back on, on, on that spend, right? So on top of automating your, your bookkeeping, you're also um, getting cash back on the, on the spend that's happening on, the, on that debit card, which is really, really exciting. Um, obviously I just highlighted 
Con Edison, which is a you know utility provider. Um, you know, you could do it. You know, for insurance. You know, you could do it for any specific sort of project you have. You know, you could put it uh, an individual virtual card on file at Home Depot for you know a specific contractor to go use and have that tied to you know a specific renovation um, that you're you're working on. So there's a lot of flexibility here um, to sort of manage the virtual cards the way that you want. Um, and that's what's sort of automated a lot in the back end. Yeah, thank you, Reed. And that's been one of my favorite use cases is that you can add it to your Home Depot app as the card to use on file. And if anybody, if you're going there, if one of your contractors is going there and calling in an order, it can directly be um, tied to this. And obviously you can set up the spend limit as well as the property and category tagging. And you have other controls. So Larissa is going to walk us through how to actually yeah. set one up right now. So let's do that. Great. So creating my virtual card here, I'm going to choose one of the Baselane bank account op cards that, uh, accounts that I have, whether that's my main account or even my virtual accounts. So I'll choose my main account here. I'll also say that this is going to be for my insurance, right? We'll just call insurance. We'll say that there's going to be a 2000 daily limit. Why not? And then the beauty of it is you can tag your property. So I'll say it's for McCoy loop here. And then I will also just tag it under the schedule or categorize it under our schedule E options here, like for insurance, and then you can create the card. So the transactions are actually going to show for, they're going to show in your main account. So any transactions that are coming in for your insurance as an example, will already be auto tagged for your property and categorized as insurance. I also really love to add these types of cards to my digital wallet. So you can add them to Apple Pay or your Apple wallet, your Google wallet, and use them at vendors that accept that as a transaction. If you don't want to, to use the card anymore, maybe you're using this for a project, you can terminate the card when you're done. So it's a really great way to kind of keep track of your expenses, your spending. When you're finished with the project, you don't want to use it anymore. Maybe you shared that card with a contractor and you're like, hey, we're good. Our project is done here. You can terminate it. If for any reason, you know, something happens and you need to lock the card, you also have that capability as well. Yeah, and one more thing, um, just... Um... In terms of the um, the usage, I think there's many examples of it. We've seen utilities being a recurring expense, uh, things like supplies and materials or construction materials and projects where you can set a limit and really having that control of being able to lock the card or change the limits was also very useful for me. Uh, and what I really enjoy is not having to worry about the bookkeeping because then I don't have to come in and, and sort through that. And uh, I really love this feature and I'm excited to use it more. I'm going to just take a quick pause here and try to uh, maybe um, look through the questions. If you guys can give us a few more minutes, I think we'll do a, 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 the full Q&A. So we'll get to these questions very shortly. Um, coming up next, Larissa, can you just highlight uh, a little bit of how we move funds related to the baseline bank account in terms of what are the ways money can move in and out of the account? Perfect. Yep. So we'll go over to the send fund section here. and. There are three options. So obviously you can do instant transfers internally through any of your baseline bank accounts. Another really great one is third-party ACH. So if you ever need to send funds to a vendor, to a contractor, you can now manually add the account. Maybe you need to just send funds to an external account that you can't manu you know, you can't connect with Plaid, but you need to send funds into that bank account, or maybe you don't want it on baseline. No problem. You can say you're sending funds to yourself or a third party. You can specify the account if it's an individual or a business, put the account type, put all the details, the account number, routing number, so forth. And then once you click add the account, you actually will have it saved here. So in this case, in this example, I have my contractor, I pay him. You can now transfer funds from any of the baseline accounts. Maybe I'll do it from my maintenance reserve here. I'll send him $1,000. You can review the transfer and it should be in within two to three business days. It's a free ACH. It's a great way to pay your vendors or contractors or even yourself. Once you send transfer, it's on its way. And this has been a big pet peeve of mine in the traditional banking space is I have to pay fees to do something like this, or I have to go to the bank physically and deposit, you know, give a check to pay my contractor. So this is this saves me a lot of time and is very convenient. Awesome. Another really great feature, like I talked about earlier, is taking advantage of our free domestic wire transfer. We've waived the fees, and as you guys all know, 
sending wires, it can take, it could be about $20 to $30 per transaction. Baselane has waived those fees for a limited time. A lot of landlords have actually purchased other homes, moved money in here through their domestic wire because it's free, and then went to the title company and sent the funds through our domestic wire program here. So you'll just put the recipient's name, the routing number, account number, retype that account number, hit next, and you should be able to send the funds same day um, before the 3 p.m. cutoff. If not the same day, it will um, go into the account within the next business day. Awesome, thank you. I think um, we'd like to cover just one more section in terms of highlighting sure. things on the banking side. And really that's sort of the uh, integration side of things, the um, transaction tagging uh, for bookkeeping purposes and also the reporting and analytics. Can you can you walk us through that a little bit? Yeah, this is a really great uh, feature of ours is to have this integrated bookkeeping. So any of your transactions through Baselane will just be displayed in the transaction section. So you'll see that there are a lot of incoming transactions you can also filter by different Baselane accounts if you would like, or even if you've connected your accounts through Plaid, you can see them here. So you can really track your spending and the different transactions that have come from Baselane, within Baselane, or even your external accounts. There's some really great capabilities that you can do within the bookkeeping or within the transactions page. For instance, like we've already discussed, you can categorize based off of Schedule E. All of these categories are actually on the Schedule E form, so you can go through review your description and make that selection. You can also tag your property. Maybe this transaction specifically was for a unit. You have the capability of also tagging it to the unit and you can also leave a note. One of my favorite features is actually to split transactions. So let's say for instance, as an example, maybe you've paid your mortgage. Well, if this in this case were to be your mortgage, you can go to the category like we all know, with your mortgage, you have to pay principal and interest. So now you can split the transaction and put a portion of your mortgage payment, your mortgage interest from the 1950, and then you can also do your mortgage principal. So that way down the line, you can pull a report to kind of see how much have you really paid in your interest for the year for your mortgage, as well as your principal. So you can split transactions. You can split it as many times as you'd like. Another really cool feature, like I've mentioned, is you know just filtering. So if you wanted to filter for different accounts, you do have that capability. You have the capability of doing a bulk edit. I'm sure you guys have a lot of reoccurring transactions. So in this case, oh, sorry, I think I didn't. Oh, I have to hit apply. In this case, if you ever, apologize, I think it's not working here, apologies. Um, it's not showing, but that's okay. It's also in the transactions page. But basically what I'm trying to say is you can highlight the different accounts, the different transactions that you have. You can search for the vendor in the search bar up here. You can edit transactions. And now you can actually, for those 17 transactions, select the category. So in this case, maybe it is just utilities, select the party, and then you can even leave a note. And once you hit save and close, all of those transactions are going to be the same category, the same property, and actually have the same note. So it's just trying to save you time ultimately. Um, uh, last, uh, yeah. Do you mind uh, also transitioning into the transaction ledger a little bit? So this was in the banking and card section. Yeah. So you can go over. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of the transactions ledger because here, not only do you, you can interact with the base lane banking transactions, you can add other credit cards or bank accounts that you have and Correct. aggregate uh, all that data and be able to uh, obviously categorize it in the transaction. Correct. So again, if you've connected your external accounts through Plaid, like I have done so here, you can go over to the transactions page and now you can filter for the different connected accounts that you might have. In this case, I have three, I can hit apply. I can see all of the transactions that are occurring in these accounts. Like I mentioned, you could bulk edit. You can also add transactions. Another really great feature because sometimes there might be a charge on your personal account and you don't want to add those bank account details for whatever reason, that's okay. You can put the description, you can put the amount, and now you can actually manually add a transaction. Mm -hmm. But basically, as you categorize and tag your properties, you can leave notes. It's really great because it ultimately goes over to the analytics analytics and reporting that we have. And Saad can talk a little more about some of his favorite reporting features. Yeah, maybe so, right before we go there, there was yeah. one related question. If you just go to transactions oh, around. Yes, of course. Is it possible to add prior completed transactions after the account has been opened? And so there's like, I think two ways, right? One, Larissa just illustrated, you could manually add a transaction. 
Um, right. The other thing is if, if the question is related to external accounts, so let's say you have you know, a Bank of America account um, and you open a Basin account, you open a Basin banking account, obviously you don't have all of those uh, transactions imported. You can connect that Bank of America account through Plaid and choose to import transactions. And I think, yeah, again, it, it can, you know, around maybe 24 months, I think it depends on the institution of historical transactions um, can be uh, imported. Um, yeah, so, uh, to go back to that, if you can quickly show Larissa how to add an external account. Sure. You can go to add an account here and you can just click on connect external account. Connect external account. You'll be transferred over to the Plaid page. You'll find your banking institution. Some are already listed. You can search in the institution. Once you do, you can also just connect to Chase, for instance, and then it'll ask you for your credentials. So it'll ask you to continue, and that's when you'll add your Chase credentials. And from there, a box will appear that will ask you to, if you would like to import your transactions. You don't have to, but it does give you that option. It's right. also really simple to remove accounts as well. In case anyone ever has to remove an account, you can just go over to this section, find your external account, external account, click on remove external account. If you would like to delete the imported transactions, you can do so here as well. Thank you. Yeah, this is all about giving you convenience, uh, but we're very transparent and upfront. So you have the controls of how you want to uh, interact with that data. Really quickly, one more minute on, I know we're going over on the sort of analytics and reporting, and then we'll go to go into Q&A. Sure. So uh, here you can see there's sort of like two parts. There's cash flow analytics and cash flow statement. We've tried to really simplify this and make it uh, more useful for you and give you a lot of filters. The main kind of thought behind this is allow you to see how you're performing uh, on whatever time horizon you like. So you can sort the filter for six months, 12 months, custom dates, et cetera. You can um, pick any property or unit that you want to analyze this for. And you can do a portfolio view or just individual properties or units. And then we've built four reports or you can customize a report. So for example, net operating income, NOI is a common metric to track on a property. This is you know, your income and expense before debt service, for example, and CapEx. So you can look at that information. Now, what I really like is the second part of this, which is the cash flow statement, where I can see it in more of a financial statement view and actually also download that into a CSV or Excel on the right-hand side. Now for tax time, a lot of you are, are probably getting ready for that. Let's say that you're just joining Baseline. You could connect your previous bank account in here, import those transactions, categorize them and create this view. And you can go, if you go to the Schedule E report, then you can um, filter for Schedule E analyze it that way and you can download that and send it to your CPA that's preparing your tax return. So those are some advantages that we can dig into this more in the tax reporting webinar that we have coming up. And uh, lastly, just very quickly on the bottom left-hand side, you'll start to see some of our embedded financial products like our rental property insurance. We partner with a company called Obi that is a digital insurance broker and they provide very competitive uh, but also very convenient service. Uh, you can go through this model and buy a quote or get a quote for a policy within three to four minutes. Similarly, we offer rental property loans and flip loans through our partner Lendency. Again, we've built a very integrated experience where you can get a real quote within one minute and then follow up from there. So that is pretty much uh, it for our presentation on the banking webinar. I think we're gonna move into Q&A and, and uh, try to cover any of your questions. So feel free to submit all your questions now. If anybody wants to, um, add more, please do. And uh, what we'll do now is cover the two questions that we have open, and sure. then uh, we can go from there. So uh, one of the questions is, can a tenant pay rent with my primary bank and then transfer to base lane, or would it be best to set up tenants with mobile pay? Reed, do you want to take that one? Yeah, sure. So um, basically, you can do one of two things with, with base lane. Um, you can actually have tenants pay rent through Baseline. Um, so through our rent collection features, you send them an invite um, and then they get invited to the, the tenant portal on Baseline and then they actually would pay you. Uh, in that case, you could choose to send that into a Baseline banking account or an external account. Um, you also could be collecting, or you may already be doing this, collecting rent online through um, another uh, type of service. Um, and you could actually connect a Baseline bank to that. Um, uh, other service, and so just connect, collect rent directly into that account. Um, I, I suppose there is, you know, there obviously is, of course, uh, checks 
and and cash, right? So if tenants are still paying by a check, you can receive that check and just using your phone deposit that directly into a basin banking account. And you know, if they send you cash, we can also deposit it. Um, yeah, one of the, ATMs. As a, yep. As a landlord, one of the things I like to do is because there there are some benefits to directly uh, depositing rent into the basin banking account. Um, and that benefit for me is that it auto tags it as rent if it's coming through the baseline banking. Whereas if you send that money directly through like a, your regular bank, you're going to have to manually do that uh, tagging. And obviously you also earn uh, the APY while that deposit, the rent is sitting in the baseline account, right? So that's what we like to do is have our rent from our, 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 our 10 or so properties moved into baseline banking and they're organized into different properties sort of virtual accounts, and then they, they get organized that way through the bookkeeping. Now, there's another question here from Vinay. Uh, how establishes, uh, how establish, okay, so how establishes baseline uh, and just asking if we're not going to shut down the website and run away with your deposits. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Reed, I'll let you take that, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So um, baseline is, is not a bank or a financial technology company. Um, the banking accounts that you open are actually not under Baseline. They're at a at Blue Ridge Bank, which is our um, our banking partner. So the routing number, um, if you were to look it up, uh, and if you actually click and, and look at account details for any of the bank accounts, you actually see Blue Ridge Bank listed there. So Blue Ridge Bank is um, uh, federally insured. They are based in Virginia. They are a publicly traded company um, on the New York Stock Exchange. They have over two and a half billion dollars of deposits, um, and so. If for whatever reason Baseline were to uh, you know shut down, your balances would still be with with Blue Ridge, um, and so um, there's no you know you shouldn't be concerned with regards to obviously uh, us uh, running away with any deposits and and of course you know the legitimacy the, the bank um, where the funds are are um, are stored is is a very legitimate uh, bank. Thank you. And that that's like your custodian, right? I've, I worked in banking um, and the financial sector for many years. Blue Ridge is the, the technical custodian of record, and that's where the FAC insurance lives. Uh, okay, so next question from Jeff. Why would it say my linked external account is not eligible to transfer funds? I think you can take that one too. Yeah, you wanna, go ahead. Yeah, it might be a debit card, I guess. Yeah. So um, what might be happening there, Jeff, is um, we require that the names on the two accounts matches. Um, and so what I would suggest is just to reach out to the support team. Uh, you could always initiate it externally. So initiate it from your external account um, and send that into um, Baseline. Um, but within your context, it would either have to match the name that you have on the account or the name of the LLC for the account that you have opened. Um, if there, you know, there are some cases where, you know, it, it seems to match, but our, um, our partner party hasn't been able to, you know, recognize the, the name matches. And so we're, we're obviously able to, to override that for you. Um, I'll just go ahead and, and have my team look into this, you know, in the, in the meantime, I'll send them a note. Um, and, uh, but, but typically we do require that uh, the names are, are, are matching. Um, some people, you know, they do just send it, you know, directly from their external account via, you know, ACH or wire into their basic banking account. Thank you, Reed. Uh, next question is related to LLC. If an LLC has multiple properties and a virtual card is used for a common expense, such as utility or insurance, does user need to manually allocate tag expense to a property or would virtual card for each account be needed? I think it depends on how you set it up. So if you have one entity and it, let's say it has four properties, you could simply set up um, uh, set, set separate virtual cards. But if you're asking like, let's say for some reason you're paying one joint bill, I guess, is that what you mean? If you can clarify your question, how would you split that out? So right now the way the virtual cards work, you can only tag it, uh, um, you can tag one expense to one unit or multiple units. That's correct, Reed, yes? I spoke yes. with Glenda actually earlier today. And oh. so just to give some context, hi Glenda. Glenda has you know, a, a, quite a lot of units and she has, for example, PG&E, that's their electricity. And some of those meters have 10 
you know, some of those properties have 10 meters. So, you know, we kind of troubleshooted together about opening virtual cards. Yes, some of the properties, you know, are under one bill and she can use one virtual card, but she also has, you know, maybe 20 to 30 bills. So how does that kind of work, Reed? Like, how would we want to do that specifically? Yeah, I mean, there, there, you could um, potentially just not add a property to that um, to that card. You could split it out from there once once it gets uh, once it gets processed, um, right, so and, only and be able to manage it accordingly. Got yeah. it. So you fill out the category, and then once the transaction comes in, you can split it across different properties. Yep. Cool. That's uh, we'll probably send, what I would recommend. Yeah. We can send a, um, a sort of a more specific example for you offline on that one on how to do yeah. that. Yeah, it's a great question. Thank you for the question. How to how to deposit cash if by ATM any bank ATM? So uh, we do have a ATM network uh, that is nationwide, and it's actually available. Uh, the information on that is available on our website. But uh, if maybe, uh, Larissa, you can uh, share a link or I can share a link uh, in a minute here on how to locate the ATMs to deposit. Yeah. You That's can go to all, we can send a link to all point ATMs. I'll send that now. But yeah, they have over 55,000 locations. So it's kind of nice as well to, Thank you. to do. Mm -hmm. So it's called all points. We'll send you the link in a, in a minute here in the chat. You can access it that way. How many virtual cards can you have? So the, you can have up to 10 virtual cards in one account. And the trick here is that it's actually 10 virtual cards per, you know, virtual account. So, you know, you could open, you know, unlimited virtual accounts and have sort of unlimited virtual cards. Um, gotcha. Thank it, you. Yeah. So in a way it's unlimited uh, or you can have multiple baseline accounts and you can have different virtual cards in there as well. When renting out to housing, uh, to housing tenant, housing pays owner directly. How would the tenant portion and housing portion of, rent integrate into the schedule e um is this uh referring potentially to like a uh section eight maybe you can clarify that if you're getting and i'm not fully understanding the question uh, okay so if you're getting a check and you're getting the um the rent from the tenant uh we've solved this problem in a couple of ways but one way if, if larissa you go to the, yeah. the property setup is yep. you can set up two units for that address. So let's say it's really just one real property that you're renting. It's a single family house, but the government's sending you a check for $900 and the tenant's paying a hundred. You can set up two different units. You can label it as you like, for example, government check unit A and tenant, you know, yep. payment unit B, whatever, any, anything like that. And then obviously when you get the check, you can do a mobile check deposit into the baseline bank account. And the tenant can be invited to set up payment and pay directly to Baselink. Uh, if you need more information about that, we can send you some specifics, but that's the easy way to handle section eight um, in our current configuration. Cool. Next question is about, uh, we have multiple properties. Um, when tenants pay his rent, will it automatically label which property it is coming from? based on their account that they are sending from, or do I need to manually tag each incoming deposit for each property? I see. Um, Reed, do you want to take that one? I think this is related to the yeah. whole, where the money's coming in, like baseline banking versus regular. Yes. So um, a couple of things here. Um, some individuals that I illustrated earlier have dedicated accounts for each unit. So each um, setting up a virtual account for each unit obviously each of those virtual accounts could be tagged to a property. So any transactions coming into those virtual accounts would be automatically tagged um, to the property. Um, and then some individuals prefer just to have a single operating account um, and all their transactions coming for all their units coming in and out of that. I believe that currently we would tag that um, transaction as rent, but not yet as uh, uh, knowing which property it is. It's, it's on our roadmap of, of things. I think one of the big pushes that we want to do, you know, over the next couple of months is to continue to add a lot of, you know, value and features to, to bookkeeping. And so I sort of talked about basing being and being supercharged with connecting to, you know, all these other features. So one of those, of course, is being, you know, able to, you know, seeing, you know, which tenants paying and, and understanding which uh, invoice that's going into basing banking automatically tagging that to the, the correct um, property. Um, 
you know, in the future, I think we want to create a, you know, many more automated rules um, for you as well. Um, but that's where we are today. I think there's an easy workaround um, by having dedicated virtual accounts for each unit. Um, but if you just have one, um, that, that's not currently available. Yeah, thank you, Reed. So Donna, for you, if you're just collecting into one account, you can, it will auto tag it as rent. And then once the rents come in, you can um, do one click for the property, or you can set up, let's say, four different virtual accounts for each property, and that will then uh, tag it as rent and and the and the property, obviously, more rule based. Wonderful. I think uh, if I'm just checking if there's any more questions, and I think we'll take one or two more and then wrap it up. Jeff is asking if we have an app or just a bank. We do not have a mobile app at the moment. We are mobile web optimized, so there are functionalities things like the mobile check deposit or tenants paying online, for example, um, or you checking in on your status for rents as a landlord that are uh, available on mobile web. And uh, we will be working on launching a mobile app, most likely in the second uh, half or later half of 2023. Great. Are there any more questions uh, from the participants? And this has been great, by the way, I, I really appreciate all the questions and engagement. So thank you so much. I think if there are no more questions, we'll wrap it up since we're over time. I just wanted to highlight a couple of things uh, just as a quick recap for everyone. And uh, before we go, we will send this recording to you so you can watch it later if you'd like to revisit it. You can also uh, watch this demo that is a more in-depth demo of not just banking, but rent collection and bookkeeping and our marketplace at baselane.com slash demo. And just one or two kind of quickly recap, if we can slide down a little bit on sort of the some of the key features. Uh, just to highlight, you can open a baseline bank account for an individual sole proprietor, LLC, or corporation. You can earn high rewards on the banking platform, 3.3% APY on all deposits, up to 5% cash back. You can open unlimited virtual accounts, and you can open virtual cards. And this really gives you the ability to better organize your spending and control your spending. And then, as we mentioned with the virtual cards, automate that bookkeeping component of your expenses. Uh, we've integrated this into our bookkeeping, but also our analytics, which allows you to see how you can perform on the unit and kind of assess what's going on. And then also our reporting, which is not only useful for sort of monthly reporting, but also end of year tax time, which is happening right around now as folks get ready for the deadline. And so um, just a quick plug again, we'll be doing a webinar on the 7th of February about rent collection and how to use it for rent collection and how to use Baseline for the tax reporting section of things. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for attending. We really appreciate your time and your engagement and all your really good questions. If you need anything else, feel free to reach out to us at support at baseline.com or on our website. You, there are many ways you can call us, you can text us or you can email us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye.